So here we have a cable that has concentrated flows on it, one of 20 kilograms and one that we need to find the mass of in order there for there to be 400 um, newtons of tension in one of these segments. And we also need to find the sag here at point C. And that's what we're going over in this video. And I've gotten the steps all written out. If you want a video explaining all of these things, you can click on this video link and if you find this video helpful, hit that like button and please subscribe. So I think the first thing we want to do with this is we want to um, draw a free body diagram of this and just use equilibrium equations and some forces in the x and y direction and also some moments about one of these points. And so we're going to draw that up here. We have our segments of cable and we have here our F sub Y, the force of that weight pulling down. We have this load which is 20 kilograms and multiply that by 9.8 and then you get that that is 196. 0.2 newtons and so that is actually the force pulling down on this we'll call this one f sub y then we have our reaction forces here we'll call this a d sub y and then d sub x and then of course we have a sub y and a sub x sorry if you can't see those ones top of the corner but we will now sum forces in the x direction and one thing to always remember is that the horizontal component of the tension throughout the whole entire cable is going to be the same and that means that these reaction forces d sub x and a sub x are going to be the same and you'll see that when we sum forces in the x direction and it's in equilibrium so it's equal to zero then you only have d sub x minus a sub y x and you get that that is a sub x equals d sub x. And of course, we kind of need to label our coordinate system. We'll call that direction x direction and the y direction. So now we'll sum forces in the y direction and it's equal to zero. So we have our reaction force A and our reaction force um, D both pulling up in the positive y direction, then we have our force f sub y pulling in the negative f or y direction, and then we have this 196.2 newtons also in the negative y direction, and so we'll say it's negative. Um, so we have this equation, and then we have the sum of the moments about a point, and sorry I didn't write that, uh, sum um, symbol right there. But we want to sum moments about a point that will eliminate the most amount of unknown forces we have here. So whether or not we, or whether we sum at about D or A, it doesn't really matter. Both of them are going to eliminate two unknowns, which is good. I'm just going to pick point D to sum them about. So sum of the moments about point D equals zero. And then you have um, F sub y, which is going to cause a counterclockwise rotation about d. We will say counterclockwise rotation is positive, so we will say that that is going to cause a positive moment. F sub y multiplied by 2 because it is 2 meters away from point d um, in the horizontal direction. And then we have this force. 196.2, it's also going to cause counterclockwise rotation, which is positive, so plus 196.2 multiplied um, by its distance away, which is 4, so times by 4. Um, then you'll have a sub x, which is also going to cause counterclockwise rotation, so plus a sub x, it is 1 meter away from, um, a is 1 meter away from d, and so multiply it by 1. And then finally, you have a sub y is going to cause clockwise rotation, which is negative. So a sub y multiplied by its distance, which is 5.5 meters.
meters away. And so now we have these three equations and we have more knowns and unknowns, so we can't solve them yet, but we're gonna set them aside here and use them in a bit. And so now what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna analyze where do we go next? And we're gonna do that based on what we know. We're gonna wanna um, go to a spot where we can solve for things and where we have the most unknowns and try to only have one or two unknowns so that we can solve for those. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna use this um, thing they give us that the max tension is 400 newtons in one, of these in one of these segments, but we don't know which, or they don't tell us which, but because the horizontal tension is the same throughout the cable, the section that's going to have the most tension, that's going to have this uh, max tension in it, is going to be the section with the greatest um, vertical tension. So the horizontal tension component is going to stay the same throughout all of these, but their vertical, to their vertical tension is going to um, be different because they all have different slopes. And the one with the greatest slope is going to have the greatest vertical tension in it. And so that, the one with the most vertical ten tension is going to have the max tension, which is what we know. And so if we know that, we can um, use that to solve for some unknowns. And just by looking at this, the picture is drawn such that this section AB is the one with the greatest slope, so we know that it is going to have the max tension. It is also the only slope, it is also the only um, segment that we know the geometry of because here they give us the dip in um, a B, the sag in B, um, and then we have the length along here. But because y sub c is unknown, we don't know the slopes of either of these segments. And so we can use that, we will use that um, geometry that we know a little bit later on. So knowing that that is, this is going to have tension of 400 newtons inside of there, we can use that to solve for a sub x and a sub y. We'll do that using the method of joints. So we have this joint here, um, this ring that's holding on our rope. We have the reaction force here of a sub x, and then we have our a sub y pulling up, and then we have our y or x component in this section of cable. It's going from point A to point B, so we'll just call it A, B, and then um, the x component of that is going to depend on our geometry here. So we have our triangle, and this section is um, the hypotenuse of our triangle. I'm sorry, that's not drawn very well, but uh, we know that this side is 2 meters and this side is 1.5 meters. And if you multiply by these by 2, you can find that this is 3, this is 4, that means that this is five because it's three, four, five triangle. So divide that by two and you know that this side is 2.5. Using that, we know that the horizontal component of the tension in this length is going to be 1.5 divided by 2.5. So I'll just write that. And you could also represent it as three divided by five if you want to simplify it, which is totally fine, but I'm going to write it this way so we can remember where it came from. And then you have your y component, which is going to be similar. It's a, b, times by the ratio of the sides, which is 2 divided by 5, or not 5, 2.5. And using that, we can use equilibrium equations, some of the forces in the x direction, some of the forces in the y direction. We know a, b it is going to have the max tension, so it is 400 newtons. So if we sum forces in the x direction, there are only two forces in the x direction. Sorry, this looks like a y, but it's actually an x. Um, a sub x will equal a b times by 1.5 divided by 2.5. So we'll write that out. a sub x equals 400 
times by 1.5 divided by 2.5, which equals 240 newtons. A sub y is going to equal 400 times by 2 divided by 2.5. Now we kind of skipped our whole equilibrium equation thing and jumped right to it, but that's because we know that there are only two forces acting in the y direction and two forces acting in the x direction. So this is our, y di our x direction equation and this is our y direction equation. And you multiply that out, you get that this is 320 newtons. So now we know our reacting forces at A. And we can use that and plug them back into here. Now we know that because A sub X equals D sub X, we know that D sub X is also 240 newtons. So we'll just write that here. That this is 240 newtons. And then F sub Y only depends on A sub Y and A sub X. So we can solve for S of Y. And we will do that right here. We know that F sub Y equals, and you probably saw by now that me having known all this beforehand, I just wrote out our equation on the side, set up to plug in these equation or these variables after we found them. So we have 5.5 divided by two. Remember this two came from this side, it was um, the moment caused by F sub y, which is two meters away, so that's why everything is divided by two. We have A sub y, which we found was 320, and then we have minus one over two A sub x, which is 240, and then minus the this force from this weight, which was four meters away, so it was 196.2, times by four, which is 784.8, and then we'll divide it by two as well. And you end up getting that F sub Y equals um, 367.6 Newtons. Now remember, we need to find the mass of F, not the force of F. But all we need to do is uh, to find the mass of F, um, we'll just call F equals 367.6 divided by the acceleration of gravity, which is 9.81, and that equals 37.41 kilograms. So, that is one of our answers. We were looking for the mass of F, and we found it. So we're going to label it right over here, 37.41 kilograms. Great. Now we need to find Y sub C. And we will do that by using um, the slope, finding the slope of this line. And we have a little triangle here that this creates and we have an angle we'll call theta here and uh, this side of the triangle we'll call H. We'll call it H. And so if we know that side of the triangle there, um, just H plus one is Y sub C. So we can find the slope of this um, segment of the cable and therefore find theta using the reaction forces here at D. And so now we are going to find what d sub y is. And we already have our equation written out for that. We have that d sub y equals 196.2 plus f sub y, which we found was um, 367.6. and then minus a sub y, which was 320. And then solving that out, we get that that is um, 243.8 newtons. So that is d sub y. And now if we do like we did at 
our joint A, we use the method of joints to solve for our reaction forces and our internal forces of the cable. We have here that this will be D sub X, which we found was 240. And then D sub Y, we just found was 243.8 newtons. Well, we have our force in our segment of the cable, which goes from C to D, so we'll call it CD. We have CD sub X, and we have CD sub Y. Now, once again, if we used equilibrium equations, we would find that CDX equals 240, and CDY equals 243.8 because they are the only forces in those directions, so we know that they must be equal and opposite for this joint to be in equilibrium. So, now that we know that, we know that CDY equals 243.8 and CDX equals 240, we can draw a little um, vector triangle here. We'll call this side um, CDX, which equals 240. And then we have our, sorry, this is CDY, not CDX. We have CDX over here. CDX equals 240. And this was 243.8. Well, we have our CD here. And we have this little triangle. Well, this angle here is angle theta which is what we're looking for because the ratio of these sides is going to be the same ratio as these sides so angle theta will equal theta equals the arc tangent of 243.8 divided by 240 opposite over adjacent and we end up getting that theta equals 45.45 degrees. Now if we want to find H, we can use that, that we know that this length of the triangle is 2. It gave us to us, it gave it to us there. So we know that the tangent of theta, which is 45.45, equals the opposite over the adjacent, so h divided by 2, multiply the 2 over to this side, and you get that that equals h. Now solve for that, and you get that h equals 2.03 meters. So we found h, now it's just simple to find y sub c, it's just h plus 1 from what they gave us here. So y sub c equals 2.03 plus 1, which equals 3.03 .03 meters. So that's the last thing we need to solve for. And I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them down in the comments. I will respond to them. I've also got all the steps written out down in the description. Again, if you want a video, um, going over more detailed cables under concentrated loads. There's a link at the end of this video that you can click on. Also down in the description, I've got some links to Teespring and Amazon where you can buy some shirts, hoodies, mugs, and other stuff with the student engineering logo on them. You can buy those and that helps me a lot. If you're new to this channel, my name is Preston Palmer, student engineering. My goal is to help other engineering students like me better understand engineering. So if you found this video helpful, hit that like button and please subscribe.